In this video, we'll continue to look at CTEC Physics Past Paper Questions. And we'll be looking at this question from May, June 2013, Paper 2, Question 5. Now, this is a question which deals with um, electricity. Now, the first part of the question, part A, says, Describe an experiment that can be used to determine the resistance of a metallic conductor. Right? So, I've basically gone ahead and I've drawn a circuit which can be used to um, conduct such an experiment. So, in the circuit, we have a battery. Um, we have a switch, we have a Weber resistor, and with the Weber resistor, we're basically going to be connecting um, one of the fixed terminal and the slider or wiper terminal because we want to be able to use it as a Weber resistor and hence the variable total circuit resistance, right? And of course, we have our conductor, which we place, uh, we label as component X. Um, now, in order to determine the resistance of the conductor, we of course need to be able to measure the current flowing through the conductor and to do that we have an ammeter connected in series with the conductor and of course we also have to be able to determine the voltage or the PD across the conductor and of course to determine that we have a voltmeter connected across or in parallel with the conductor right now basically um, to, 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 to um, execute this experiment procedure we we'll basically close our switch Typically, we'd start with the Weber resistor set to the, the maximum value so as to limit the current flowing in the circuit. And of course, we'll decrease the resistance and we'll basically take a set of readings of current and voltage, right? So we take a certain set of readings of current and voltage, the PD or voltage across the conductor and the current flowing through it. We'd of course tabulate our results until we have, say, about eight sets of readings. And of course, we then plot a graph, right? Now, um, after we plot a graph, no, well, what type of graph do we plot? We could actually plot since um, a graph of current in amperes against voltage in volts. Now, if you plot a graph of current against voltage, the gradient of the graph, which you'll of course have to find, that will be equal to the reciprocal of the resistance. So if we plot a graph of current versus voltage, we can actually find the gradient equated to one over R and therefore solve for R where R is equal to 1 over the gradient, right? Now, typically this is done when you want to actually investigate or to obtain the IV characteristic of a particular component. But of course, since you're only interested in finding the resistance, we could actually plot a graph of V versus I instead, and it therefore would mean that the gradient of the graph would be equal to the resistance of the conductor, right? So this is a circuit that can be used and we ju I just basically described the procedure which can be used to actually obtain the results from which you can actually plot a graph and determine the resistance of the conductor, right? Now, many students would have been tempted to just say, um, connect a circuit with um, a battery, a switch, a voltmeter, and an ammeter, um, close the switch, um, measure the current, measure the voltage, and use Ohm's law, R is equal to V over I, to calculate the resistance. Now, the question said you're supposed to describe an experiment which that can be used. Now, that experiment can be used, but you're probably not guaranteed to get the full six marks for which this part of the question is worth. So, if you were to do a little bit more detailed experiment like this one, or de like this one, then of course, you're guaranteed to basically get your six marks once you basically um, talk about um, how you'd execute it and how you obtain the resistance from the graph that you'd plot. All right? So, that would be part A. That was part A of the question. Now, let's look at part B of the question. Part B basically says that figure 2 shows a 12-volt battery of negligible internal resistance connected to an arrangement of resistors. So this is a circuit shown. So we have a 12-volt battery and we have four resistors connected in the circuit, R1, R2, R3, R4. Now, as expected, um, our battery will be driving a current. Our battery will be driving a current I. Let's call that current I, right? Now, what will happen is that this current, of course, will flow through the R1. However, when it gets to this junction, let's label this junction. This is a junction A, and there's another junction here, B. When it gets to this junction A, what will happen? The current will split. The current will split, and a portion of the current, let's call it I1, flows through R2, and another portion of the current goes around to flow through R3. Let's call it I2. Now, the fact that the current splits at that junction, then this simply means that these two resistors, R2 and R3, are connected in parallel, right? So, you probably looked at how they're actually um, connected side by side and probably would have been able to, you know, um, 
guess correctly, of course, that they're connected in parallel, right? But um, the, the diagrams not, are not always drawn, so you could actually interpret exactly how they are connected based on how they look, right? So due to the fact that the current splits at this junction, a part of the current will flow to resistor R2, another part flows to resistor R3, then it means that these two resistors are connected in parallel. Of course, the currents must recombine at junction B and the entire current I flows through resistor R4. So what exactly does this mean? What it means is that these two are connected in parallel. That combination is in series with R1 and of course, everything is in series with R4, right? So once again, these two are in parallel. R1, however, is in series with this combination and everything basically are in series with R4. So essentially, R1, this combination of R2 and R3 and R4 are connected in series. Good? Now, the question tells us that given that resistors R1, given that resistors R1 to R4, each have a resistance of 3 ohms. So this would be 3 ohms. This would be 3 ohms. 3 ohms. 3 ohms. So given that all 4 resistors have a, um, have, a, have a resistance of 3 ohms, calculate the total resistance in the circuit. Right? So we know basically we have R1, 3 ohms. These two in parallel, 3 ohms. And of course the entire combination is in series. So first of all, let's work out the combination of these two connected in series. So we know from before that whenever we have two resistors connected in parallel, their total effective resistance would be given by the product divided by their sum. So since these two are R2 and R3, so the, the resistance of that parallel branch, let's call that R, will be RP, let's call it RP, will be equal to R2 times R3 divided by R2 plus R3. And so this gives us three threes, or three times three, over three plus three, which gives us nine over six, which is the same thing as three over two, or 1.5 ohms, right? So the resistance, or the effective resistance of those two is 1.5 ohms. Now, we really didn't need to go through this because we, we were told that all these resistors had the same value, three ohms, and generally, if you have identical resistors connected in parallel, the effective resistance is the value of one resistor divided by the number of them, right? So once again, if you have identical resistors, that is resistors of the same resistance connected in parallel, then the effective resistance of the combination is the value of one resistor divided by the number of them, right? We see that basically, well, 9 over 6 would have actually simplified to give 3 over 2. Right? So each of these resistors is of resistance 3 ohms, and because it's two of them, the effective resistance would be actually be 3 over 2. So because these were connected in parallel and they were identical, we simply could have divided the value of 1 by the number of them, and we'd have gotten 3 over 2, which of course is equal to 1.5 ohms. Right? So once again, whenever we have identical resistors connected in parallel, we really don't need to use this equation, but it still works, of course. But we just need to remember that if they're identical and connected in parallel, we take the value of one resistor and we divide by the number of resistors and that will give us the effective resistance of that combination. Good? All right. So having done that now, what this now means is that this 3 ohm resistor is essentially in series with a 1.5 ohm resistor and that, of course, is in series with another 3 ohm resistor. So therefore, for the total circuit resistance... Right? So the question part one asks for the total circuit resistance. Let's call it RT. So the total circuit resistance would be equal to 3, 3 ohms plus 1.5 plus 3 ohms. And so this gives us 7.5 ohms. So the total circuit resistance, of course, is 7.5 ohms. So once again, these two are in parallel. But that combination is in series with a 3 ohm and also in series with this 3 ohm as well. So the total circuit resistance is 3 plus the equivalent value of this, which is 1.5 plus 3, which gives us 7.5 ohms. Good? All right, so that was part one of the question, part one of part B. Now part two says we're supposed to calculate the current drawn from the 12 volt battery. Now having calculated the total circuit resistance, essentially all of these resistors together is essentially equivalent to a single resistor of resistance 7.5 ohms. 
So essentially, it's as if we have a 12 volt battery and in the to connected to that 12 volt battery, we have a single 7.5 ohm resistor. Now, to calculate the total circuit current I, we can therefore say that use equation Ohm's law in the form V is equal to IR. And so therefore, the total circuit current I is equal to V over RT, which is equal to 12 volts divided by 7.5 ohms. And this gives us 1 point, let me see, 5... 7.5, that leaves, um, hmm. well, I think I have to go to my calculator for this. Um, where's my calculator? So 7.5 into 12 goes one time, and that leaves, hmm, that leaves 4.5 as a remainder, right? 4.5 was 7.5, 45 was 7.5, that's 9 over 15, or 9 over 15, or 3 fifths. All right, so this, is, this is, looks like 1.6. So this is 1.6 amperes. But of course, I'll just check to verify on my calculator. Right, so 12 divided by 7.5. Right, correct, 1.6, 1, 1. right? So the, the total circuit current is of course 1 point, um, well the current drawn from the battery is, 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 is 1.6 amperes, good? So 1.6 amperes. So before we go a little bit further, let me analyze what is happening here. So essentially, the battery will be driving a 1.6 ampere current. So this entire current of 1.6 amperes flows through the 6 ohm resistor. It comes to this junction and it will split. Now because it basically sees two paths of equal resistance, the current will split evenly. So therefore, a half of 1.6, which is 0.8 amperes, flows through R2 and 0.8 amperes flows through R3, right? So the current splits evenly because it's seeing equal resistances in the two parts and um, when you get to junction B those two currents will then recombine and the total current I which is equivalent to 1.6 amperes will then flow through resistor R4 good all right so having established that the question asks us to find the voltage across R2 right so we already established that the current through R2 will be a half of the total current of 1.6 amperes that is due to the fact that these resistances are identical and therefore the current, the total current, will split into two um, or split evenly and then flow to each of these resistors, right? So therefore, to calculate the PD across R2, let me just make some space. So the PD across R2, this is part three. Uh, this marker kind of gone through. So to calculate the PD across R2, um, the value of R2, of course, equals 3 ohms and the current flowing i what did i call it current i call it i1 is equal to 0.8 amperes right so 0.8 amperes and so therefore v pd across r2 is equal to i1 r2 which is equal to 0.8 amperes times 3 ohms and that gives us 2.4 2.4 volts right so this gives us 2.4 volts so therefore, the PD across R2 is equal to um, 2.4 volts. 